Ladies and gentlemen, my name is James Scarsbrook, also known as the Intrepid Wino, and welcome to a kind of a cool, special uh, edition of Let's Taste. Uh, last year, in 2015, in May, I was travelling through Western Australia, visiting wine regions, Margaret River, uh, Great Southern, that kind of thing, and I had the opportunity to meet uh, Andreas who uh, told me about his little project that he was working on with his wife and partner, Yoko. Uh, and they are officially now available uh, under the Brave New Wine model. Uh, he thought I'd be particularly interested uh, as they are uh, low intervention wines and not only do I have the good fortune of selling some wines like that from Italy but also uh, I'm very much interested in those wines being produced in Australia and so uh, they have very 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 generously sent me all the way from Denmark in the great southern region of WA uh, six bottles so they're the six wines that they have produced uh, and I'm going to open them up and actually see what they have to offer. So I am so excited. Uh, I hope you are too. Uh, I guess um, Brave New Wine is a concept where uh, Andreas and Yoko have purchased grapes from within the Great Southern region. Uh, I believe like Perongarup, uh, you know, around Denmark, that kind of thing. And they're being produced in very small, very, very small volumes, uh, and the idea is that, um, you know, that to use sustainable fruit and to use, uh, I guess, maybe some quite controversial, challenging, exciting, low intervention, uh, wild winemaking techniques. So, I guess, um, without further ado, let's get started. First wine is called Little Sister from 2014. Uh, uh, it is obviously, it's a bubbly wine. One of the things you probably notice is that the, the, the bottles are super cool. They look like um, soft drink bottles. Uh, I guess the only exception being the Brave New Wine, probably because it wouldn't be, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Little Sister, probably because it wouldn't be able to handle the pressure in that bottle shape, so it needs to be round. So it is a Pithion Nathel, or a pet nat, or a method ancestral, uh, so which means, whoop, here we go, which means that the wine has gone through a second fermentation, uh, sorry, the wine has re-fermented in the bottle. Uh, the fermentation would have been stopped midway, wine transferred into the bottle where it restarted its fermentation, thereby creating bubbles. It is a 100% Pinot Noir uh, Petnap wine. So let's have a look at what she has to say. It's got a nice kind of rosy sort of color. Uh, just a very, very mild fleck of orange through there. Very delicate bubbles. Quite funky, pretty wild right off the bat. There's some earthy, um, sweet sort of meat and red fruit characters. Yeah, it's sort of brooding. It's, it's not kind of bright and fruit driven like you would expect a, a rosé or a, a bubbles to be. Let's taste. There's certainly a bit of grip in that tannin. Um, it has that kind of crunchy red berry acidity that I like to see in Pinot Noir. Um, it is quite focused, very lean. Uh, again, it is on that sort of slightly more savory style uh, of the equation. Um, it is, I would say, probably a better kind of food matching wine than having it on its own. If you are expecting a nice kind of bright, easy, approachable, sort of fruit driven,
bottle of bubbles. This probably isn't for you. This one is a slightly more interesting uh, food oriented wine. Yeah, it's all in the mid palate. Fascinating start. All right, I'm really not sure in what order uh, it is ideal for me to taste these wines. So I'm sort of basing it on the color, for the, certainly for the next three, uh, what looks to me like the lightest to the darkest. So I'm going, next I'm gonna try the Sunshine and Hercules from 2015. I might give that glass a bit of a rinse. That beautiful white A from Plum. Hope everyone has been having a lovely Easter, by the way. Nice to see screw caps as well. Okay. So there is a little bit of cloudiness, you can probably see. Uh, I would say that is probably because it has been unfiltered. Uh, the Sunshine Hercules is made from Riesling, 100% Riesling. And it certainly has a kind of, uh, almost like a lime cordial kind of uh, Riesling fruit character. You sort of see that kind of mineral, that kind of, um, sort of almost soda-like spritz kind of character, which is, you know, definitely it's a Riesling character. Let's taste. It's acids, texture, it's sort of some almost gherkiny, like mirin kind of um, texture and savory kind of brininess, which is really interesting. Uh, I would think that that's probably a combination of a little bit of skin contact and some extended lees contact. It doesn't. It definitely has that riesling fruit character, that um, citrus. Um, even hints of tropical notes, but very much in that kind of lime, lime sherbet sort of realm with that really interesting kind of brininess. And kind of like a sweet gherkin. Mm. Again, fascinating. Very interesting expression of Riesling, particularly from uh, this you know, what is considered to be a, a really excellent place for Riesling. All right, next one is the Clusterfunk. Very, very cool name. I, I, I am kind of marking out to that one. So the Clusterfunk is, uh, let's see, Clusterfunk is uh, a Chardonnay, 2013. Hold on, what's the next one? Doppelganger, whoop, excuse me. Dop actually, I'm gonna come back to the cluster fun. Let's look at the Doppelganger, which is a 2014 Riesling, 100%. Certainly uh, more color uh, in this bottle. Which you can to compare these two. much more exuberant on the nose. It, ha it kind of has that same kind of gherkiny sort of briny notes on the nose, but it's more dried floral. Like it's got an interesting kind of potpourri herbs sort of note. Very, very interesting. Yeah, very wild, very wild, spicy, very spicy in, on, its, on its nose. Let's taste. Mm. 
More savoury. More, you see more skin contact influence. Um, that kind of spice herb. Um, it's got this kind of interesting sort of potato, roasted potatoes with rosemary character on it. It's very, very wild. There's some kind of I can't quite put my finger on it. It's kind of got like a there's a sort of a sauerkraut in it too, which is really interesting. Very savoury. There's a smokiness to it as well. There's something quite compelling about the doppelganger. But definitely, again, in that kind of more savoury realm, such a different expression for Riesling. I am really quite astounded at the character of that wine. It lingers as well. So two very fascinating expressions of Riesling. Okay, let's come back to the Klusterfunk, which is 2013 and it is made from Chardonnay. Cloudy again, lighter in colour compared to the uh, Doppelganger. That's got some real smoke, smoky kind of flinty, like salt, like dried crackers with salt on it. Yeah, it's very, it's sort of hard to get past that kind of smokiness. That's, it's, I mean, it's a real kind of struck match note. Kind of a burnt sort of note as well. I know this doesn't sound, this probably doesn't sound like very appealing characteristics for a wine, but it's sort of hard to explain. These are, these are challenging kind of characteristics that I think that there are people who really, really dig these wines. I think a lot of people would probably write them off and kind of say, oh, they're too, they're too extreme, but I think that there would be people who really would get into these styles. All right, let's taste the, uh, the, the cluster folk. Whoa. That's very textural. That, that is certainly not a clean wine. Um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot going on structurally in, in the mid palate. It is, um, merely meaty it's not it's very unusual to see that kind of meaty savory note with uh, a wine made from a white grape variety of course uh, skin contact can influence that quite a lot oxidative handling can influence it quite a lot um, it definitely it has a, a really profound oxidative character uh, not unlike some fortified wines. Um, it says here that it sat under a, a floor yeast for six months, so that is definitely contributing to that. Look, that is a, that's a really wild wine. Um, again, I think that people who like very classic Chardonnay are really going to be turned off by this wine. Um, I. I question, I, I, I do question, I have a question for Andreas and Yoko. I, I have a question that I wonder if the market is ready for these kinds of wines. Uh, I guess there's probably never been a better time in history, uh, certainly not in Australia, for these kind of wines to come onto the market. But yeah, there's um, that this the, 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 the cluster film in particular, I think, is going to challenge people. Okay, let's have a look at some reds. First up, I'm going to open the El Rojo, which is a Tempranillo, Graciano and Shiraz blend. Uh, this is from 2013. 
Nice dark colour here. I think of, of the wines that I've tasted so far from Brave New Wine, this is the first one that kind of looks pretty. It has beautiful small berry, floral notes, dried florals. It kind of has a, a, an interesting sort of sarsaparilla kind of note. The meatiness certainly comes through, but this is, this is by far a, 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 a pretty wine. Let's taste. There's some really serious tannins going on here. It's not aggressive, it's not kind of like really tight and like really kind of almost stings the mouth. But it is in that kind of, we'll say it again, more savory realm. There's some tightness, there's some kind of brown wood, like as in whole bunch notes coming through. It certainly um, probably needs a little bit more time and that's really interesting considering it's from 2013. Um, but the, the tannins are a little bit uh, tightly wound at the moment. Not heavy, not heavy but dark and tightly wound. But it's certainly been the brightest, absolutely, uh, in particular, aromatically. Okay, so the first five wines all have a recommended retail price of $28. The last one, the, the Schadenfreude, uh, is uh, Shiraz from 2015. This one has a recommended retail of 35, so it's the odd one out as far as the retail price. Schoenfer looks a little bit closed. Uh, it, it show, for me, it shows a little bit of reduction, um, which the way I look at reduction is it's a way for a wine to protect itself. It goes into a kind of a protective blanket sort of thing that sort of makes everything a little bit quiet. Again, it has that kind of savory element to it. Um, this one has a little bit more of that kind of cured meats note. It's not as bright and pretty as the uh, El Rojo, but it, uh, it's definitely in intense. Let's taste. fruits, black flowers, dried flowers, not, not black pepper but there's sort of this black spice to it as well. It's surprisingly fresh, I, I could f at first the tannins kind of give you a little bit of a, a jab, um, particularly in the mid palate, but then it cleans, it cleans up towards the back, it's, it, it has a nice fresh finish. Uh, I think again this one is a little bit too tightly wound for, for the moment. I think it does need a little bit of time. Uh, it probably could do with decant as well. I might even decant this last one uh, this evening and see how it looks um, in six hours or even tomorrow. But it's um, dense. Absolutely, it's dense. Thank you guys for watching this little tasting. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Andreas and Yoko, for very, very generously sending me these bottles. The wines are a fascinating uh, discussion, I think. Uh, I really would like people to taste these wines because, uh, again, for me, one of the most exciting things about the, the new wave of wines in Australia, in spite of the fact that they are made in 
very small volumes in comparison to much larger, more established wine producers, they are changing the discussion about what is wine in Australia, what is quality, and what do people like, I guess. Um, I think in the same way that sort of television networks, classic television networks would create the same kind of product because they would say that's what the people want and then cable networks like HBO and Showtime and then Netflix came along and created this new kind of content because they didn't, the, the, the audience was never given the opportunity to, to create themselves. These wines are in a way like the, the, the HBO and, and Showtime of Australian wine because they are creating a very different expression about what, what Australian wine is and it looks like they are finding an audience. They might not be made, they might not, might, might not sell millions of cases, but they don't need to. They don't, like it would kind of defeat the purpose, I guess, because you know, who wants to make, I, I guess it's, it's like comparing, um, it's like comparing House of Cards to something like CSI. CSI is like a very bland kind of product that is designed to appeal to as many different people as possible. But House of Cards says, no, we want to create the show we want to create and the audience will find us. And they are probably going to be a, little, a lot more diehard. And certainly natural wine loving fans are diehard. I saw that at Rootstock last year. I saw that at, uh, I saw that at, um, uh, what was the event? Black Ice and Sparrows put on um, uh, Wine Down. Um, it, it is, it, it, there's, a, there's a fever about these kind of wines and it's exciting to see. And you are starting to see what I consider to be conventional winemakers changing their approach a little bit, introducing, uh, you know, a few non conventional techniques, skin contact, lees contact, um, you know, less filtration, wild yeasts. It's, it's exciting to see and I hope that you are enjoying uh, this journey and I, I, I appreciate it if you are being taken on this journey by myself in, in some small way. It's very humbling to know that people are watching my videos or listening to my podcast particularly when I talk about these kinds of wines because um, uh, I am by no means um, a, 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 a follower, a cult, a cult member of these kind of wines. I, I am trying to come in with an open mind and not throw myself in entirely, but I have to say that they, they are the, by far the most interesting wines that I've seen in my wine career. So uh, if you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to Intrepid Wino channel, go and visit uh, bravenewwine.com.au, find out more about these wines. If the wines are not available in your location, make sure that you get in contact with your, uh, I guess, more low intervention wine leaning uh, retailer to make sure that they stock some of these wines because I think for the price at $28 and $35, these aren't expensive wines considering they are really going to make you think about what you like in your wine. So uh, I hope you'll watch my next video. I look forward to opening more bottles for you. Until then, cheers.